Oh, hey! Welcome. <laughs> it's the Crucible cast. Welcome Hello. to the Crucible cast. This is a special developers only version of the Crucible cast. Ooh. The chains are off. <laughs> We're going to be set free. But not quite, not quite all that. My name is Tyler Parrott. I'm one of your Keyforge developers. With me is Aaron Haltom. Hello. And also we have Fuzzy Josh here. Yes. In, in, in the in stead his, of regular. In his small, most orange and large-eyed cute form. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's not the in-the-flesh Josh, which is much larger and also probably fuzzier. Also very cute. Also pretty cute. <laughs> but we're here to talk about Keyforge. So, real quick, just to let you know, uh, we're going to touch some news. We're going to touch some organized play news. We're going to get to our main topic. And then, as usual, we're going to address a few rules questions before we close out. All of the timestamps for those can be found in the description below. Mm -hmm. So, Aaron, I don't have any news. You got any news? <laughs> nope. Uh, but Fuzzy Josh has some news. Has some oh, OP Fuzzy news Josh. <laughs> let's, uh, let's hear about Fuzzy Josh's organized play news. Uh, so the first announcement from Fuzzy Josh is that the new OP kits are on their way and uh, will be in stores here fairly shortly. Uh, so players should be very excited for yeah, man. All, the, all, the, all the goodies uh, that are in those uh, that they can play for soon. And uh, the second announcement is related. So uh, chain bound and weekly events are still proceeding in stores that are safe. Those, so those are still being uh, supported. And yeah, I'm very uh, jealous of all those of you <laughs> who are getting to go out and play in person still. Uh, and I guess that's a good but hopefully that's, for our next topic. <laughs> but hopefully that's going to be true for the rest of us at some point in the near future. Yes, um, yes. Can't wait to play. In the meantime, though, we wanted to talk about, for our main topic, how are people playing games, specifically Keyforge, but also games, with their friends right now when we're all in a pandemic and everybody, or not everybody, a lot of people have to be staying home in order to stay safe and keep the... the coronavirus under control. Mm -hmm. I've certainly still been playing games. I know you have. Yep. So, uh, Aaron, what games have you been playing? And more importantly, how are you doing it? <laughs> uh, well, one thing uh, we've been playing a lot of is Keyforge. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> since, you know, it's our job. I guess we, should, <laughs> we should probably do that. Uh, and since we can't play tests in person anymore, we've been doing a lot of play tests with just me, you, and Danny, some combination thereof. Yep. Um, playing with our webcams, you know. With your webcams? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So how do you have it set up so that I can have my board and you can have your board and we can know what's going on with each other? Well, I, uh, a lot of times it's, you know, you have to tilt your laptop camera so you can see, you know, you get a good downward facing shot. You can mm -hmm. see, see your board that you lay out there. Um, and I, I usually just use like some game boxes to stack up on. <laughs> Certainly, we all have a bunch of those lying around, don't we? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I noth nothing super fancy. Uh, you need a webcam with some decent resolution, which luckily my laptop has, so that you sure, can sure. Ac actually read the cards. And <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've also heard that people are doing similar things with even just their cell phones. You stack a bunch of books or a bunch of game boxes, put your cell phone on top. Cell phones have surprisingly good cameras these days. Yeah. Um, obviously, other than us playing Keyforge with each other, have you been playing other games this way, and how's that been going? Uh, yeah, I've also, uh, I, I have a, a role-playing game uh, going on that we uh, we use, you know, an online service, and uh, we uh, have the, the map all laid out in the, the grid, and we have our little uh, characters, uh, so our avatars for our characters, uh, one of our players is is an artist, so she's uh, drawn some of oh, the, the avatars for us. They're I love it. they're adorable, so that's great. I love it. And uh, we can move those around the board uh, and represent the combat in that sure, sure. really satisfying tactical way. And uh, certainly, with a role playing game, half the game is just chatting with your friends anyway, and you don't even need a board for that. Yeah, that part of it. And we we also do uh, the, you know the face to face video from our from our laptop. So for sure, know, for sure, that's that's kind of in the corner. We can all see each other's uh, you know reactions and stuff as well. So that's of been course. really fun. Of course. <laughs> what about you? Uh, well, so I've been playing a bunch of card games. Surprise, surprise! I like card games. Um, I actually have set up with a, a, a an external camera that I have USB plugged into my laptop. I've set it up so that it can be suspended and point straight down. Oh, cool. So that you can get a really yeah. nice sort of 
rectangular shot of the, the play space. Um, I've been playing some multiplayer Magic, because that's a game that I like to play on a fairly regular basis, especially in a much more casual way. Mm -hmm. Certainly, since it's, it's you can't be cutting each other's decks, right? Or right. interacting with each other's cards, so it inherently makes the game experience a little bit more casual when you're playing online. But honestly, like, I find that just as enjoyable because it means that I get to play games. <laughs> also, one of my friends has been running, I'm now in the third tournament. Um, one of my friends is running an online tournament for a card game that I used to compete in. Uh, and we're now in the third tournament. The second tournament, I totally scrubbed out. I won <laughs> zero rounds. I went I'm, zero and 10 in the Swiss, and it was so, so embarrassing. <laughs> this time, though, I'm having to come back. Uh, I've made it through my Swiss rounds, and so now I'm definitely in the top cut. Oh, and now I'm ready okay. to lose in round one, and then be out of the cut again. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's it's hard to stay as sharp as players as oh we used goodness. to now that we're busy actually being developers all the time. It's well, like a different skill set. <laughs> and also, when uh, when you're managing, I mean, get at this point, getting the the camera set up is actually pretty swift for me, right? I can get it set up and then play for a few hours. But like when you're playing in a tournament setting, even when there's no stakes on the line except for pride, pride can be a lot, <laughs> let me tell you. Mm -hmm. um, even when the stakes are fairly low and it is a casual tournament, like I still want to like prep beforehand, right? So yeah. uh, finding time to prep and make sure I'm bringing the right decks to play, that can be a little bit difficult. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, it's been really fun getting to play uh, online games using webcams. It's been surprisingly real life, you know, except for the fact that I just can't reach out and, and touch your cards. Mm -hmm. um, another, but another game that's worked great for that, like, feels very uh, realistic, is uh, to uh, play a lot of our like LCG co-op games. Oh, uh, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. Because then, like, the encounter deck and all that that stuff is what most players need to see. Mm -hmm. um, and so only one player needs to host that, so I can have my webcam pointing at that. Everybody can focus on that. Uh, all the player spaces don't actually need to be on camera at all. Because oh, sure. You can, someone... Everybody can, can trust you know each other to say, I'm, I'm piloting my deck, I've got out my upgrades, and I do this much damage, or I, you know, to that guy, or mm -hmm. I, do this much progress over here so uh it's it's pretty easy you know you only need the one pilot and everybody else can just so if you want to play with your friends but maybe not everybody has a camera you can still yeah. get in the co-op game so long as one person can run the encounter deck yeah uh, they can i don't know move the enemies to various corners if they engage with players or something but mm -hmm. as yeah i get no that makes a lot of sense because as you said co-op games we're all working together but like I don't need to verify necessarily what you're doing because mm -hmm. what's the point in cheating in a co-op game, right? <laughs> yeah. And that makes it less of a production. Yeah, it's yes. just 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 For the one sure. person has to pilot it. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought of something. We're here talking about how to use cameras to play games, and <laughs> right. we're in a film studio, and we wow. got a camera guy. <laughs> hey, hey, Ryan, what do you got for us? You got any advice? Uh. Hi. Hello, <laughs> welcome to this side of the camera. Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> you know, it's bright. It's all bright. Uh, yeah. oh, camera, live streaming, uh, playing with friends. Yeah, no, I, I'm doing a lot of video myself at home. Been playing Key Forge, been playing some other games that might be on that shelf over there. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, all via uh, Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. mainly, and then uh, Skype. It just goes, yeah, uh, Skype. I think easy. everybody has Skype. It's just so easy. Mm -hmm. But even though I deal with all of this fancy camera equipment and all this fun stuff, yeah, I'm. Uh, I just have a laptop and a webcam at home, and that's all mm -hmm. I'm. That's all I'm using. That's uh, all I need. So my laptop. The way we're setting it up, what most people mistakenly uh, set up is they they put all their stuff in the wrong spot. Uh, <laughs> what I mean by that is uh, somebody might sit down at their kitchen table or whatnot, they, they don't realize they're right in front or right right in front of or right behind an open window. Uh, and they're like, why does yeah. this look bad? It's, most people get the get flooded out and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So the, you know my my you mentioned putting your cell phone or webcam, it's exactly what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I just have this tiny little like five dollar 
tripod. It's a, it's a tripod know. or like a stand of some kind. It's a, well, it's a tiny little tripod, but it was like ten dollars on Amazon. Oh, and then that's uh, so affordable. I duct, <laughs> I duct taped a, a wooden dowel to it, mm. so it flies over. And then I duct taped my webcam, so I have a top down. Like you, you know, get by really cheaply. You know, I've with been lots of equipment. I've been thinking in the back of my head that I really wanted to like. DIY my own tripod so that because like the setup I have right now is good but if a cat runs by and I do have four cats so that's very <laughs> likely then all of a sudden like the camera's swinging around because they hit the wire or something so duct tape is your friend duct tape I, is my friend apparently when I'm when I'm set up and filming um, I guess two weeks ago I was playing keyforge with some friends um, and I had my little top down uh, aiming and then I reversed the camera so it was pointing the wrong way and then in Skype I flipped it so it was mm, yeah, looking yeah. the right way and then my laptop was over here and I'm using the laptop camera as well so I had a picture in picture because I'm sure I overproduce everything <laughs> I do uh, so I had picture I in picture and we were looking down um, but then I was full screening uh, my buddy's yep. camera so I was looking at his board state on mm -hmm. my laptop while I was playing on my side. Yep. And then he's looking at my full board state because that's really Same all deal. it needed to be. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, the important thing is to know when they're getting close to the amber. So we made yeah. we made sure, you know, so I knew when to attack all of his creatures and like time Don't for a board out. wipe. Um, <laughs> but a lot of it's really simple. The cameras are pretty easy to figure out. Most people, they look online, they can see everything sitting around for like, oh, the top down side view. Mm -hmm. the, the things that people forget are lighting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be crazy just make sure that your bright sun isn't shooting over your shoulder because your camera's gonna hate you yeah that's um, a good point. and if your room is too dark then just go get a table lamp and set it just off off frame is there a is there a, is there an angle that you would recommend should the do, do you say like point it at the wall so it deflects the light to diffuse you, it or you can do that um like if you're going old school gorilla filmmaking you can as simple as wax paper from your uh, uh, oh from your kitchen from your kitchen sure. just hang it in front of the light bulb it will, oh, it creates oh, that's a so easy. Yeah, it creates Thanks. diffusion paper. It's something that, you know, filmmakers have been doing for ages. Yeah. Wall bounces are fine. Um, the biggest thing is it doesn't matter what's in your scene. If the camera is not seeing it, it doesn't exist. Sure, sure, sure. So, so you can have all sorts of nonsense yeah, like going on behind the camera. <laughs> we're, we're, we're on camera right now. All this stuff exists. <laughs> what you don't see <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Lots of things that don't exist above us. The uh, nest really. of xenomorphs is approaching <laughs> upon us. Oh, yeah, no, no. They're, they're, they're on fun. the motion tracker, the, but they don't see The rats gnawing at the edges of reality. <laughs> are, are you okay? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know, man. <laughs> Too much Arkham for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Don't... Uh, at the end of the day, don't overthink it. Very like, cool. It's, you can have a single camera. You don't even need that. Like Aaron was saying, playing art, role playing games. Mm -hmm. You know, if your DM has the dungeon master, sorry, sorry. <laughs> even, I, even I fall into that. Game master. Game master now. GM. Um, even if, if if they're the only the only ones broadcasting and everybody can talk to each other, that's really matters. Mm -hmm. When playing a vis a, a visual game, card game, board game, anything that requires a, a top-down camera, um, that's on you, how you want to say it. Zoom is your friend. Like, you can have all those people mm -hmm, right in there. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of our other employees, I overheard them talking, they played a single cam version of a, I don't want to say the name, we'll say a space game where <laughs> some people aren't actually people. Mm, and it's yes. subversion. They played it with one camera. Sure. And then just, just everybody explained the where they then, were going. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, six people getting blown oh. out of airlocks. <laughs> cool. Maybe I can get some of my friends to play Twilight Imperium with me that way. Although that might be way too big of an endeavor. <laughs> yeah. I think you'd be better off. Uh, I think you'd be better off with like a game that would work really well uh, would be like say Letters from Whitechapel. Oh yeah, because yeah, you yeah, only yeah, need totally. the one board. Absolutely. Everybody is Absolutely. is busy doing their thing, so that'd be fun. You know, old school diplomacy. Oh um, yeah, I'm all about old school diplomacy. I don't think you could pull off dominoes, but <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> new glasses? No, they just a new mask. Um, and the mask has a ribbon, and the ribbon is slippery. Interferes. Yeah, same yeah. with mine. Well, yeah. Anyway, that's uh, yeah, that's my two cents Sweet. on video filming and stuff like that. So. Thanks for chiming in. Awesome. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. <laughs> I'm going to uh, I'm going to movie magic. Incredible. <laughs> Whoa. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
And that's it for our main topic. Mm -hmm. Real quick, let's answer some rules questions in our rules questions with Aaron segment. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll send you on your way to enjoy the rest of the month. Aaron, All right. hit me up with them rules questions. Sure. Uh, so we have four questions today. They're all uh, fairly straightforward. Um, the first two are about stun and enrage rules. Uh, so in the, the latest rules update, we had uh, some clarifications to the way that stun and uh, enrage worked. Mm -hmm. uh, and we made, made them a little bit more uh, universal in their, in their application. Uh, sure. so, so it's easy for people to understand exactly how uh, stun and enrage work. Uh, and, but that's led to some follow-up questions. Naturally, uh, as it always that, does. That people have had. <laughs> uh, so we, we just want to continue to clarify that for people. So first one. Yes. Um, is if you have a uh, Saurian egg that's stunned mm -hmm. and you uh, call, say, House Untamed, uh, can you use that uh, Saurian egg's Omni ability to clear that stun? You're asking me. Sure, yeah. All right, uh, let me guess. I want to use the Omni ability, but the stun says instead of activating, you have to clear stun and do nothing. So I'm going to guess that you activate the Omni ability, exhaust the creature, remove stun, don't resolve the ability. Correct. Yep. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> yes, All right. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you don't have to uh, call the active house. Uh, the active house doesn't have to match. Uh, the creature's house. So anymore. long so, as you're using the creature at all, yeah. you're going to clear stun. Okay. Yep. That's simple enough. Yep. Uh, and then the second question is uh, about ghost talk. So if you play a ghost talk between an enraged creature and a stunned creature, what happens? <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. So ghost talk says uh, play it and reap with both of its neighbors. Yeah. And has deploy. And, and it has deploy. Sure, sure, sure. Yep. So you're going to. Uh, you're going to do what we said. You're going to try to reap with the stunned creature. The stunned creature, instead of doing whatever activation it is, you're going to clear the stun. So Correct. it exhausts, it clears stun, nothing else. Right. Yep. The enraged creature can't reap. It says it tries to reap, but it can't reap, so it just does nothing? Yeah. Correct. Oh. It, does, okay. it doesn't exhaust uh, because it can't. Mm -hmm. It uh, can't reap, so it can't it's reap. not even going to try, really. Yep. So, okay. no, so nothing happens on that side. Simple and, enough. And it doesn't matter... Uh, which houses those belong to? Ah, uh, because, very important because, because Ghost yes. Talk just says Ghost uh, Talk just says reap, do it. Reap with the two neighbors. So sure, yep. sure, sure. Doesn't matter if they're off house or not in that case. And once again, Stun doesn't care about the house you chose. It just cares that you're activating the creature or using the creature at all. Correct. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, same. Makes sense. Yep. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, third question is regarding Drecker. Of course, it's it's a complicated. Part. Oh boy, it's, it's good a old weird, Drecker. <laughs> Um, so it's Drekker and how it interacts with poison. So okay. if I have a Drekker and another creature next to it, uh, my opponent uh, attacks Drekker's neighbor with a Macus Asp, which has poison. Mm -hmm. Does uh, the poison's going to kill the neighbor? Is it also sure. going to kill Drekker? Uh, Drekker, if I remember correctly, says the damage that is dealt to its neighbors is also dealt to it. So the source of the damage is the same. So it is still what's massive, Mac, Macus Asp, like a, a one power or a three power creature. Right. Uh, it will still be one or three power <laughs> with poison. And therefore, because it has poison, Drekker dies. Yes. Ah, yeah. OK. Yeah, correct. Yeah, the, the source of the damage is Macus Asp's power. Right. Still, it's, it's, it's not, not a separate, it's not the Drekker card effect that's making a separate instance of damages. Perfect. It's just sharing the, yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Nope, oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Drekker is a source of many corner cases. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, and then the last question is yes. an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, uh, it's a goodie. Regard, regarding Niffleape. Hey, uh, my boy Niffleape. <laughs> yeah. So Niffleape ignores elusive. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, is, this is just a question of, what does that mean? So mm. uh, if my opponent has a, a Kulf the Quiet, which is a six power creature with six elusive. Six power elusive creature. And I attack that with my Niffleape. Um, Niffleape will ignore the elusive, so they will actually deal damage to each other. Niffleape dies, uh, but three of the damage goes through uh, to Kulf the Quiet. Kulf the Quiet survives. Mm -hmm. Now I want to attack him again to finish him off. Um, does elusive prevent damage with that second attack that's happening? 
Well, elusive only prevents damage during the first fight the creature's involved in, so I'm going to go with no. The first fight was the fight with the Nifilate, and that fight dealt damage because the Nifilate ignored the elusive. By the time you get to the second fight, it's not the first fight anymore, so elusive doesn't matter. So no damage was prevented by elusive in this case? Just Correct. both fights dealt damage? Correct, yeah. All right, because, all right. Uh, Nifilate elusive, sneaky. Yeah, elusive literally cares about the, whether it's the first fight or not, so mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't get preserved because it got... You, right, it's not the first fight that this creature had elusive, it's the first fight of the round. Right. <laughs> yes, that makes sense. Uh, so that's that's a good tip for how to get the most mileage out of your Nifilates there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sneak in there with your Nifilates. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I hope this has been really enlightening and exciting for everyone. Um, and I look forward to playing with you online, maybe, in the near future. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so... Thank you all for joining us for this Crucible cast. Uh, if you have any rules questions, be sure to send them to our rules email, which is in the description below. Uh, of course, don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon, which will let you know when we post new videos for you to watch. Also, be sure to give us a thumbs up. That'll help us appear more on YouTube's mysterious algorithm. <laughs> Of course, as always, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of the other social medias as they appear, and links are in the doobly-doo below. <laughs> doobly -doo. And of course, uh, click on the thumbnails to watch previous episodes of the Crucible cast so you can get caught up on all of the recent news and exciting developments. Thank you all very much for uh, joining us this month, and I look forward to chatting with you next time.